Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Phoenix Point. It is the, I guess, new XCOM-like, made by some of the original XCOM developers, uh, which is really interesting, because it effectively is... It's actually closer to the original, original XCOM style, compared to what Firaxis has been putting out. And so that means, like, weight classes, and slightly more character customization, and stuff like that. And that's really cool, and it's a little bit more sandboxy, open-worldy, than XCOM 1 and 2 were. Uh, and as such, like, you got some more toys to play around with. There's some factions you need to deal with, a whole world map to work around in a much more organic feeling sense compared to the previous games. But with that, it does come with a couple of extra issues. There's some baffling design decisions and just some odd bugs. Uh, specifically, looking around cover is really, really rough, at least for me. Uh, so I'm going to be a little bit incensed about that but apart from that it is a very very competent XCOM clone so if you're looking for more of that and you've gotten a little bit bored of modding XCOM 2 to death and long war and all sorts of stuff then this might actually be worth checking out because it really does have the basis for a solid XCOM game that said if you're on the wall I'd wait for like one or two quality of life patches because it's pretty good but it needs just a little bit more time in the oven before it's really ready. Luckily, they've got a lot of that stuff coming soon. I really wanted Blood and Tita Titanium to be available. I like cyborgs and robot men, but sadly, no. In what may be the hottest year in history, scientists have recorded radical changes to the permafrost in Antarctica. The Pandora virus, a so-called giant virus with the largest genome size ever recorded. The crabs also display increased aggression, even towards larger predators. A striking new weather anomaly has claimed many coastlines around the world. NASA is examining these clouds to figure out... We've detected large amounts of an organic composite. So far, the sample doesn't match any of the DNA records we've compared it with. We all saw it. Those creatures coming out of the sea on that oil rig. The president has declared a national emergency... It's obvious that what we're dealing with here is a biological weapon. As of today, we are at war. It's taking their minds. I saw them walk right into the sea. Thousands of people. Thousands. The mist is gone, but the city is dead. The roads are broken. You must join one of the havens. Do not attempt to survive on your own. My name is Randolph Symes. I am the last leader of the Phoenix Project. If you are hearing this, I am most likely dead. But in happier news, a scarab has been sent to pick you up, and its artificial intelligence will take you to Phoenix Point. Get to it quickly and safely. Oh, that was fast. Okay, camera and movement. Now, I believe I have free cam on. Kind of works. Okay, camera movement. Uh, left click plus drag. Rotation. And resume T and G. Alright, one way or another, we're just gonna quick. go along with this. Move my soldier. Use select the tile we have an alert. Okay, alerted enemy. What is this thing? Can I zoom in? I wish I could. I enemy icons above your action bar show all spotted enemies. Red icon shows an enemy in direct line of sight for the selected soldier. Okay, have this guy move up. Let's do this. We have a lot of them. Health bar indicates the uh, current hit points. Armor pips to the right show the amount of damage prevented from each shot. When at, when targeting an enemy, the amount of damage from an attack is shown on the health bar. The wider the damage prediction, the more likely it is. Okay, so select fire. Ready to fire at the enemy. Now, is there a manual mode that I have access to? Not yet. Oh, yeah, what is that creature? Okay. thought this was going to be another lawyer lawyer game. Nope, this is very much not Phoenix Wright. This is Phoenix Point, slightly different. That said, I would absolutely play this crossover. Damage and body parts. When a character is attacked, damage is done to the body part that was hit, as well as reducing general HP. Wounded body parts are marked in yellow on the damage display, left of the health bar. I like that system. That's cool. It's going to be inconvenient, but I like it. 
Disabled body parts will usually cause bleeding, loss of strength, and possibly willpower. Any special ability given by the body part will be lost. Attempting to reposition. Okay, so here's this. Free AM allows you to target a body part and see the effects of disabling the body part. Each body part has its own hit points and armor value. Damage prediction is also shown for the damaged body part. Or the targeted body part. Outer blue circle shows you where all your shots will land. The more accurate the weapon, the smaller the circle. Free aim controls. Enter free aim. Press the icon. Scroll. Okay, so we can zoom in specifically. So what am I even looking at? Arm, arm, leg. What the hell's the head on this monster? I don't know. Launcher, arm. I guess I'm just going to aim for the torso. I like this free aim system. That's really cool. And yeah, the fact that you know where your bullets are going to land, that's really going to cut down on our RNG. Because I always hated having a 99% chance to, to hit. And that was a guaranteed miss for some stupid reason. Like, it's like VATS, except for VATS just automatically targeted a location. Okay, kill all enemies. Now, this character is pretty injured. Let's go with this. How do I... Okay, so... Hmm. What else do we have? We have... Half there, she's kind of wounded. I'm not a big fan of these character portraits. I generally always prefer hand illustrated or drawn. The kind of just uninspired looking 3D models always bug me a little bit. Let's, for better or worse, move forward. Okay, how do I switch character? Switch enemies. Oh, wait. F, here's how I switch between. I was really hoping there would be a, uh, I could press, like, QE or something like that. Oh, tab, you're right. Okay. I guess I'm going to just zoom in on this one. That should mostly hit. Insufficient damage. Now that's got no cover. That's got some cover. Here's the question. Hit the head. Kind of works. I'll get better at this. I'm just looking forward to sniping in this. Because this will be... This is so much more engaging for me. This is going to hurt, isn't it? Yup. I probably should have backed the heck off. Well, he's not dead yet. But, uh... Okay. I can do this. So it looks like we've got 4 AP. I'll have to mess around with this. bash, but that seems like a bad idea. Uh, I mean, honestly, considering these guys are melee, and this guy is almost freaking dead, maybe best option is freaking bail. Alternatively, we might just be invincible for this specific section. Hello. Not 
the kill. Okay. So, it looks like you might actually be able to get multiple shots off in these situations. Now, I pretty much have no choice but to blast his leg off. Thank you. Well, we did die, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I got spoiled there by by just tutorial invulnerability. I'm on the move. Anything else? Nope. This. Vehicles are armored are armored personnel carriers with a mounted weapon. Soldiers can enter the vehicle by moving to the entry marker. Okay, so enter enter it with we both characters. This is fun. I, I'm already liking a lot of these improvements over what XCOM generally had. I'm on the move. And admittedly, like, we'll have to see once we get further in uh, and how it works. The UI is a little bit fiddlier, but that's okay. I like that little... I like that little vehicle. It's kind of fun. It's almost cartoony. It reminds me of, like, an 80s... Uh, like an 80s APC kind of thing. Not something you'd see in, like... Reality, but I don't know. It's cute. But yeah, we got we got wrecked. What? Oh, that's the car. Well, that'll be fun. It's like XCOM and Valkyria Chronicles combined with action points. That's cool. That's really cool. If you are hearing this message, an alert has been triggered and you will need to clear out the enemy forces. There may be others who receive this signal. Help them if you can. It's all up to you now. Good luck, operatives. Symes out. Okay. We're just getting dropped in here. Inventory shows everything carried by a soldier and items on the ground are adjacent crates. If the weight of all carried items and armor is greater than soldier's strength, and the soldier suffers a movement penalty. Huh. We have inventory. Uh. Okay. Tactical inventory display is divided into three sections. Ready. Contains items that are currently equipped and ready for immediate use. Backpack holds all items carried but not equipped. Round. Items on the soldier's tile or in surrounding tiles. Entering the inventory display has no AP cost. Moving any number of items from one section to another has a fixed cost of one AP. Except for moving items to the ground, which does not cost any AP. Oh, that's another great name. Uh, let's see. So equip medkit. Take a medkit from the equipment crate and put it in your... That's rad. And a grenade. Ready for action. I was not expecting a loot system in this game. For your tutorial, I want to grab stuff. Oil. It's also possible to come across allied characters in battle. Allied, allies surrounded by blue circle can be rescued and come under your control. End your turn for now. Why? This is a terrible idea. This tutorial is suicidal. Hey, let's just run out in the middle of nowhere without even paying any attention to where we're going. Oh, and she's bleeding. Okay, status effects. Are bonuses or penalties that affect a unit for a certain amount of time? Positive effects are usually acquired through abilities, while negative effects come from enemy weapons and abilities. Bleeding is one of the most common status effects. Soldiers suffering from bleeding are dealt a set amount of damage at the start of their turn equal to their bleed level. Bleeding can be cured by using a medkit. After the mission ends, bleeding and disabled limbs are cured. But hit points need to be restored at base with a medical facility. Items in the ready section of the inventory are shown in the ready items bar. They can be selected for use without an AP cost. Uh. Okay, wants me to move here. I was like, do you want me to throw the grenade there? The answer is no. And turn. What about, what about bleeding, lady? Alright, whatever. Alright, she's still super injured, though. I like characters are rescued by moving a soldier next to them. After they're rescued, a character can be given orders along with the rest of your squad. Okay. Standing by. Yeah, so the UI is a little bit fiddlier than XCOM 
was. XCOM felt smooth. Awkward, but smooth. Various soldier classes, each with their own set of abilities and equipment proficiency. While any soldier can use any armor or weapon, doing so comes at the risk of lower accuracy or fumbling. The heavy class soldiers are proficient in heavy weapons and usually equipped with armor capable of enduring large amounts of damage. Their emblematic jetpack suit allows them to fly over obstacles or reach high points with ease. Wait. Heavies are jet trooper? I guess. Jump jet trooper. Why? Why must this tutorial ha teach the worst tactical lessons? Oh well. Okay, combat reactions. Some abilities, such as return fire, allow characters to react during the enemy turn. Return fire allows a character to shoot back when the enemy shoot at it or any of its allies as long as the attacker is within 18 tiles of the target. Only certain weapons are able to return fire, regardless of what skills the unit might have. Move your assault under the wing. And then return fire. Oh, observe the return fire. Okay, so he returns fire. I need better armor. Yeah, it's not Overwatch. At least that's not the Overwatch ability. That is that is return fire, which is slightly different. It's a counterattack. This is Overwatch. Covering. Okay. Character stats, equipment, body parts, abilities, and status effects can be viewed at any time in the character info panel. View info for enemies as well as your own soldiers. Select your soldier, then info. Oh, info. There we go. So, torso is disabled, which sounds really bad, but oh well. What about... What about heavy weapons guy? I guess that's the point of this. I wonder how deep the character customization is in this game. Because I know in XCOM it could be a little bit specifically simple. You pretty much just had two abilities to choose between. Okay, kill all enemies. I sure. Uh. Oh, he ain't dead yet. Surprisingly. Recover will points equal to half willpower in this character's turn. Overwatch or fire weapon. Where's his head? Oh! I thought he had a machine gun. He has a different gun. Well, realistically... She could probably just move closer. This guy's almost dead. That's not a shotgun, it's like a... I think he straight up just has a cannon. Which is kind of exciting. Alright. And they're still injured. No skill points, no EXP. What? Alright. But yeah, I like the idea of a giant slug cannon. That's... that's fun. The Phoenix Project was founded on October 24th, 1945. The Second War to end all wars was over, but there were those who understood that we could no longer afford to think in terms of nations and empires. For a time, the Phoenix Project successfully navigated the political conflicts of its era. That was our golden age. Phoenix Project operatives scoured the world for clues. We had bases in two dozen countries, even the heavens were not off limits. But out there, on the far side of the moon, began our downfall. The failure of the Phoenix 2 mission exposed us to our enemies in the UN. Stripped of resources and scattered to the winds, we were reduced to a secret, a memory. When the Pandora virus woke up, 
We should have been the first line of defense when huge clouds of mist appeared over the sea. When people started vanishing, we should have figured out what was going on. And when those people started coming back, changed, hostile, alien, we should have been ready to fight, but we failed. The ecosystem started to change, imperceptibly at first, then faster and faster. Three factions arose, New Jericho, trying to restore order and purity. Sinedrin, hoping to build a world without hierarchies. And the Disciples of Anu, a new syncretic religion dedicated to adaptation and biological change. At war with the world and at odds with each other, these factions cannot find a way forward. Now the mist is returning and armies are rising from the sea. Without the Phoenix Project, humanity will fall. It's time to rise from the ashes. All right, Geoscape shows the world in all locations and sites of interest. In the beginning, all you know about is your base, Phoenix Point. Interesting. Click bases with left click. Got it. So, it doesn't look like there's necessarily a failure point yet. One thing I never really liked about the XCOM games is, like, if you took too long, I, I think it was worse in... Uh-oh. Uh, one thing I didn't like about XCOM 2 especially was that there was, like, a direct time limit that you had to worry about. I kind of prefer these games where you can kind of just pick and choose as you go along. Battletech was really satisfying. Um... Yeah, I, I didn't like the Doomsday Counter. That was, like, one of the things that I would have gladly just turned off. Um... Because I, I, I would have much... I, I much prefer games where I can pick and choose my missions based on kind of what I want. And... Not have to worry about, like, the game just being like, By the way, you lose because you're too slow or something. Yeah, thankfully someone modded it out. Yeah. And uh, that's actually the version I had played back when I had played XCOM 2. Which I think was fine, but I... It, it's still part of the reason why I'm, like, not super interested in ever going back to XCOM 2. I'm not Christopher Odd. I'm not Beagle Rush. I wish I had the skill and the patience for that kind of thing, but it's just... I, it's not my thing. I, I am the guy that likes to make the overpowered, overgeared, you know, just doom guy my way through everything. Sort of... Team, I guess. I don't know. That's... That's that's what appeals to me the most. And so I hope I hope that's what we get here. And that's probably what we're going to you know kind of go with. And if that involves some time copying, so be it. I'm trying to be upfront here because I know people are gonna be like, why would you do this thing later on? But anyway, your base is a stronghold containing all facilities as well as vital resources such as food, materials, and tech. Phoenix Point is in bad shape. You need to repair your vehicle, babe, before you can launch your Manticore aircraft. We'll take some time. Okay. So, you play for Power Fantasy. Hell yeah, I play for the Power Fantasy. If I want to play a hard game, I'll play Sekiro. And even then, like, I kind of wish Sekiro had a slightly easier mode, where the enemies did, like, just 10% less damage, or just moved to, like, 10% slower. That would make my life easier. That game, that game just got tough and hard on my hands. Okay, uh, let's see. So, we got to repair the vehicle bay. We've got power. I like this base building system. This might be kind of fun, and it looks like current base Phoenix Point. We might get more bases too, which is kind of fun. So let's let's repair this stuff. Back to the geoscape. Okay, so time does pass. Okay, Manticore is your aircraft for transporting soldiers and exploring the world. The aircraft's crew is shown in the aircraft bar on the bottom of the screen using the soldier class icons. Send your Manticore to the unexplored site. Okay. This is different. Where is my base? Because I'm lost. Okay, here we go. I was wondering about this. It's like I kind of just scrolled off and then lost it entirely. Alright, let's go check this out. You do not pick a starting location for your base, I just noticed. Yeah. We'll see if that matters. We don't 
have to worry about like appeasing China or Japan or Russia. Because I remember that was something you kind of had to do in XCOM. Was it one or two where you had like you had to answer to world interests and that was rough. Anyway, initially all sites on the Geoscape are unexplored, marked with a question mark. You need at least one soldier. Okay, that was XCOM 1. You need at least one soldier on board and aircraft in order to explore. Exploration takes time and you may get ambushed, so be on your guard. Okay, eliminate all enemies, claim resource crates. So there are going to be different enemy types too. That's fun. I wonder how destructible the buildings are in this game. Like, could I potentially have an entire team of people designed entirely uh, around destroying buildings and everything inside them? Like, we must destroy the city to save the city. Can I do that? Is that an option? Please let it be so, because that would be amazing. I don't want to nuke it from orbit. I just want to be just a demolition squad. Like, I was trying to think of character names earlier, and all I wanted to do is just name one character Trash Compactor. And I feel like that should set the theme for the rest of this playthrough. You want to go full EDF? Hell yeah, I want to go full EDF. Like, the EDF deploys. I was kind of hoping I could rename my, my, my group to just the EDF, because, I mean... What this is okay so we got a bunch of characters here i probably should have checked to see if we could rename people move? uh because yeah i don't know any of these people are these explosive they probably are looks like fog of war is less of an issue line of sight is the big big deal here okay can i get up here I wonder if I can just grab the resources. Wish the captain from EDF had a name that we could use. Yeah, no, nah, he was just the he was just the captain. That said, we could name a character here Captain Anime, if possible. Let's see. Where is a bad location to hide this character? Because I get the feeling there's going to be something in there. I've got to be quick. Just move over here for the time being. What was? Oh, what's this? Oh, it's too late now. They're shooting my shit. So resources are like the meld in XCOM, but minus the timer. But the enemies will shoot them. What do those poor resources ever do to you? You monsters. Let's try this. Jump chats. I do not know what that thing is up there. Anyway, we found some friends. Oh, what? That cost all of the AP. Oh, well that went poorly. Uh, move backwards slightly. That was, a, this was all a mistake. I was hoping Jump Jet would uh, not have to worry about that. I was wrong. Okay, time to save my friend. I wonder, is there friendly fire? I'm assuming there's friendly fire with explosives. Got this covered. Okay, found the enemy finally. 
I unfortunately ran out of AP. This is gonna go bad. Stop shooting my shit! Okay, so we made we made mistakes. But at least the little buggers probably aren't going to get at my people. As egregious overuse of Overwatch should help considerably. You know, I just realized, why the hell did Blizzard not make an XCOM like? Specifically for, um, oh yeah, Jump Jet requires free AP to use. I have no idea what that means. Here goes. Uh, let's see. Moving. But like, you'd think it would be an absolutely brilliant uh, marketing idea to straight up have Overwatch be, uh, like, to have a spin-off of Overwatch centered entirely around, uh, let's see, that guy's there. I'm just gonna go for some long shots here because whatever. Go from there. So what is this guy? Sniper, looks like? Moving now. Hit everything. Okay, what about you? Move forward? Oh. Really? You can't peek out of cover. Guess not. Alright. Okay. This guy looks horrifying. That was... Yeah, tree counts as half cover, so you can't peek. Well, this person's gonna be in trouble. Maybe. Uh, gonna have her back over. <laughs> Figure it out. Eight paralysis. Yeah, these are kind of long shots. Uh, equipment damage. That's this will be interesting. My shit! I should have sent more people this direction. I just figure there's only one enemy over here. Okay. So if I bash them. Confirming target. So use two AP. It's probably fine. Okay, then I'm gonna have her hide around the corner. Oh, is that a window or a door? No. Okay, can't see. He's good. You got anybody you can specifically shoot? Oh. Oh, hop down with the big guns. Now, there's an arm, there's a machine gun arm that we can mess up. We can mess up the head.
Okay, so we destroyed its machine gun arm. That's... That's pretty cool. Okay. So there are very specific angles we're going to be able to hit this guy at. Where there's another one. Right in the arm. Well, I don't think we killed it. I think we just took its arm off again. Oh no, it's quite dead. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, do we have any better cover Anywhere around here? No. I know there's one more enemy in this vague area of over here. But I've lost it. Okay. And I'm gonna actually have this guy run up this direction. Mainly because this person might need help. Ow! Okay. By the way, I hope it remains pretty clear. Oh. What? No! Damn it! What? I guess I'm just gonna go grab this. Okay, what do we have? We don't have any more AP, but we've grabbed the thing. I wonder if you can actually just get all the, the stuff. Open. Yeah, I know it's back there. Nope. That could be worse. Could have been a lot worse, actually. Oh! That was it. Okay. So we got some injuries. We got a skill point pool. Interesting. Well, this will be fun to play around with. I don't know. I It's got enough changes that it's not just like, oh, it's another XCOM-like. I've seen some kind of okay indie ones go by, but this is the first one that actually, like, holds a candle to the predecessor. Might even be better. We'll have to see when we go by. Okay, so these are the items that I would have found in the kits. On completing a mission, all gathered items and resources are added to your overall supplies. Soldiers get fatigued during battle, losing one point of stamina per turn, max 10 per battle. Stamina falls below 20%, and soldier will suffer an action point penalty in the next battle. Your soldiers will recover stamina and health while resting in the base, as long as the base is a functioning living quarters in Medical Bay. Turn to your base so they can recover. Personnel roster shows your soldiers and ground vehicles, wherever they're located. You can and transfer soldiers by selecting the location button on the right side of the list entry. You can customize your soldier's appearance and voice by selecting the customization icon. Cool. Okay, uh, so personnel. Manticore 1. Uh, let's see. So we can do equipment. You can equip your soldiers with new weapons, armor, and other items by dragging available equipment from the store's onto the appropriate slots of the inventory section. You can instantly equip and produce items in ready slots by using the plus ammo and plus item buttons. The armor section shows the armor the soldier is wearing for legs, body, and head. Mounts is used for special equipment can only be attached to the corresponding piece of armor. Go to the training section. Soldiers can increase strength, willpower, and speed, as well as acquire new abilities by spending skill points. If a soldier has used all personal SPs. They can use Phoenix SPs, which are common for everybody. Soldiers can only acquire abilities for their current level of level or lower. Upon reaching level 4, each soldier has the option to specialize in an additional class. Oh. The last row of abilities present in personal aptitudes in the soldiers... Oh. Represents the personal aptitudes the soldier is born with. Hm. Once you're done, go to research. Okay, uh, let's just finish the tutorial and then we'll make some weird dudes. Research projects are critical for improving your capabilities and winning the game. To speed up research, build more research labs. Research takes time, so make sure time's advancing in the Geoscape. 
Atmospheric ana analysis. Six hours. Managed to connect to some of the remaining weather satellites. We should be able to use these to assess the extent of the new mist outbreak. Okay, so that's just going to go. Okay, so once that, we're going to pause and then unpause. Personnel. How do we change these characters? Soldier name. Condition. What? Oh, I see. Condition, status, location. So how do we... Aha! There's... There's this. Okay. So, we're... This is going to take a while. So, I should probably mention some things. This is going to be the end of the episode, but I've got some things to say before we go. First and foremost, if you're wondering why I'm cutting out character creation, it's because people like to complain about it whenever whenever I include it in a video. And it's like, this is too long. It included it as its own thing. I just skip to the end. Skip the video entirely. So, I'm actually going to have character creation be a separate video on my side channel, Wanderbot Prime, mainly because I need to put more content on that channel, and just because it's a better place for stuff like this. Beyond that, I will say that I'm liking this game. It's definitely got some flaws. It's got some weird aiming quirks. I've been playing some on stream, some off stream, and it's certainly... It gets better once you get used to it. Once you understand how it works, and you're going to see over the next two episodes me getting kind of frustrated, and then me more positive. We'll see. It'll be sinusoidal. But either way, it's got some good shops here, and if they can quality of life patch this just to be slightly better, oh, it's going to be so good. Because, yeah, I really like how sandboxy it is. I really like a lot of these mechanics. The AP system is a lot more fun to play with, and the different character classes have some neat toys, especially once we get, you know, mounted items and a bunch of other, like, carryable equipment and whatnot. And hopefully the DLC will kind of pad things out so there's even more options, because as it stands, the character classes are a little bit thin, and I would like to see some crazy stuff down the line. And maybe it's one of those that I actually need to unlock some of the other character classes. Because I think I only have three right now. And I want more. So, I guess with that, uh, last thing I should probably say before we go. If any of you guys do pick this game up, if you look in the description below, there will be a Epic Game Store affiliate code as part of the link to the, you know, the buy Phoenix Point. And that is... Anytime you buy anything on the Epic Game Store, you can put in your favorite content content creator's name into like a little bar, and that'll give us five to ten to even twenty percent sometimes of the sale, which isn't much but helps a lot. I'm still a little bit kind of grumpy about how Phoenix Point specifically was handled on the Epic Games Store, and I realize that that might be a sticking point for some of you, but like, I don't know. Not really much we can do about it at this point. Just voice, please don't do that again, and then move from there. Luckily, we shouldn't have any more of these like, hey, we're going on Steam. Nope, never mind, we're going on Epic after this. And the only reason why I kind of bring it up at the end here is because Phoenix Point is probably the most egregious of the, hey, we're switching to a different platform. But anyway, so like I was saying, if you do end up picking this up, use the affiliate code below or just put in Wanderbot at checkout and I'll get a little cut. And Epic doesn't get as much of a cut, which, I don't know, stick it to the man, give it to me, I don't know. Look, I have to sell out a little bit, this is my job after all. But either way, I'm enjoying this series, I'm probably going to keep it up for quite some time. I want to get to the point where we have the big guns, before I really call it on whether or not this is a good XCOM clone, or an okay XCOM clone, or a bad XCOM clone. Unfortunately, it's going to take me a little while before I get the big guns, but once we're there, I hope it's good. So, as with that, if you like this episode in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe, because I am going to be doing quite a lot of these over the next couple days, and it's nice to have that support. So, with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.